Hello, my name is Blake, and this video is five things you can sell on eBay this afternoon if you have an eBay account and it's all set up. These are five things that are always selling, but right now, because we're in month three of this lockdown, they are selling even more than usual. These are things that are going to be in your house. So if you're worried about social distancing or getting sick or whatever it is, you don't have to leave your house to get these things, not retail arbitrage, not thrift stores, things you're going to have around your house that you're probably not using. There are a lot of things in my house I don't use, and I assume you're the same way. Item number one is going to be books. People are reading a lot of books. I personally am selling a lot of books, both on eBay and on Amazon. I'm going to avoid Amazon because for many people, it's a bit new, a bit confusing, but eBay is very intuitive, and oftentimes people who need money who watch my videos have experience with that. Do I prefer Amazon for book selling? Yes, I do. But that doesn't mean there still isn't an opportunity on eBay to make more money oftentimes per book because you can save on fees. It's a slightly different game. And when I say game, I mean just outcomes and results and, and um, perfecting those when you uh, consider eBay versus Amazon. But because there are so many new sellers who are watching videos like this, I'm gonna focus only on eBay. So how do you sell a book? It's very easy. Uh, books have things called barcodes on them, and if the book is so old it's lacking a barcode, or if the barcode doesn't show up for some reason, books have ISBN numbers. So you can find what that book is selling for on Amazon, or on eBay I mean, by putting in the book title or the ISBN and then doing completed searches and seeing what it sold for and conversely what uh, listings didn't sell assumedly because the price was too high. And so that's how you decide how to price an item on eBay. It's very simple. I'll even take a picture of a book that I will sell on eBay and show you the process that I'm doing for it. Let's go with this book right here, JD Robb's Vendetta in Death. I bought a whole slew of these from a distributor, so I'm gonna list this book as new. But for most books, if you don't have a distributor, I would not recommend listing them as new. List them as like new if they're in mint condition, or just be safe and say they're in good or acceptable condition. The first thing we're gonna do is look up this book on eBay with the search function. I typed in, um, I didn't type in anything. I hit the search button and I hit the uh, little uh, phone or camera icon in the top right corner, and then I'm using that red line to scan the barcode. So no typing at all, puts the barcode in, uh, and then it shows you by uh, hitting completed listings like I am right here, uh, what's selling and what's not selling. Now it looks like most of these books are selling. Uh, again, this is a, a relatively new book. It came out last year. I think it's in demand. And we're seeing recent sales around the $10 range, $8 range. I would price mine a little bit higher. Uh, I don't necessarily like to drive down the price of my items. I only have one book left. So what I'm gonna do is price it at 20 bucks and then when I want to list it, the listing function is very similar to the search function. You hit the little ticket in the bottom right corner as opposed to the magnifying glass. Pops up the same input bar with the same red scanning bar. You scan the back of the barcode. Or if you don't have a barcode, put in the ISBN number in that search input. It puts up all of the people who have made listings recently. And you can take the details from this listing, the genre, the author, all that stuff, and put it in yours. Uh, you're gonna have to add your own pictures as you're gonna see but that's fine you don't want to use someone else's dingy dim pictures um, especially if your book is new like mine is what i want to do is again take a picture of this book and highlight it's new there's no uh dog earring there's no remainder mark there's no crinkling or whatever so i'm just taking pictures on my phone it's not a very professional listing because again i have one copy i'm just kind of burning through these um, you know, if I was trying to sell like wholesale the rest on eBay, which I sold them on Amazon, you know, full disclosure, not eBay, I would take more time. I would white out the background. But for most of these things, we're just trying to get things on the marketplace. I don't want to do an auction. I want to do buy it now because buy it now generally gets you more money. And for my price, I'll do about 20 bucks. I do not want to drive the market down. I don't like that. I am not accepting offers because, again, right now, if someone wants the book and they're home quarantined, you don't have to negotiate, you know, you, as a seller, you have the leverage. No international shipping because again, coronavirus restrictions. And um, I'll keep my, you know, free shipping for buyers. I do free buyer shipping, one day uh, shipping as well because that helps with eBay's search. And look at that, I'm done. The book is up, it's been minutes. 
A little quick caveat before we go on to item two, you might be saying, oh, but you're never gonna sell that book for 20 bucks and it might not sell for two months. It might not sell until November. But the point of this video is not me telling you how to price your items. It's me showing you things that sell and you saw all those green listings so you know they're selling and it's me showing you the process to list. And as you just saw, it took two minutes to list that. It wasn't a great listing, but will that sell? at the right price at a price let me rephrase that well if i priced it at five bucks would that sell yes absolutely it wouldn't even matter okay you see what i'm saying here you know don't look at the details and try and find flaws in the details based on your own personal business because that is applying something that you have in your life to everyone else and that's stupid look at the process i'm doing take the process and imitate it emulate it apply it to your life in ways that make sense don't just follow me listen to what i'm saying and apply it to your own life in your own specific and individualized ways i beg you now that i've established how to list something i'm not going to take time with every individual item after this to show you how to list them because it's all the same process look it up take pictures find the price you're done move on so we're gonna go over these things, and instead of just repeating myself over and over again, I'm gonna try to comment on what I think makes these things specifically good to sell right now, and, and what kinds of things of these subcategories to look out for. So item number two uh, of things you can sell right now on eBay is DVDs, specifically DVD sets. Now, if you were being sneaky and watching my recent searches on eBay, you will see that I was looking up Squidbillies DVDs. Why? Because Adult Swim's license on a bunch of TV shows is running out very soon. Some of those shows are going to HBO Max. Some of those shows are just drifting off into purgatory. Squidbillies is one of those shows that is just drifting off into purgatory. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I did not see a press release about uh, HBO Max picking up uh, Squidbillies. So what I did before I made this video is I bought a whole bunch of brand new DVDs uh, for the Squidbillies series. And my intention is to sell those on Amazon, but I could very easily sell those on eBay. Now, just another quick little note for you new people. You most likely cannot sell DVDs on Amazon. It's a whole ungating process. I have a video about it. You can watch it, but it's like a half hour long. So just if you're trying to make money today, just focus on eBay. Okay, so again, we've established that Blake is buying these DVD sets. Why is he doing that? Because that's what I've noticed people are buying a lot of. A lot of. I sold uh, a six DVD set of the British TV show Endeavor for 120 bucks two weeks ago. You know what they were trending at uh, four months ago? Like 50 bucks, 40 bucks on eBay. You know, way, way, way less. People are conditioned to binge programs for better or worse. You know, you might say it's a bad thing, but it's still a thing. And so when you can find a bingeable, pro a bingeable set of DVDs, be it they're an actual series set, or maybe it's even your own uh, conglomeration of like action DVDs, or thriller DVDs, or pandemic DVDs, whatever it is, those are the things people are buying, and they're buying them with the intention of binge consumption. Like I said, you might not like it, but it's a fact. You can just go on eBay, completed searches, and see, just type in DVD sets, and see what's selling. There are a shit ton of them. This is going to be our, uh, our third item. It's, um, well, it's board games. And I'm going to say focus on old board games because new board games are a dime a dozen. And I haven't noticed a huge increase in prices, but something like this, the Legend of Zelda game by Nintendo, uh, is going to be extremely valuable because they're not making these anymore. It's got nerd culture allure, and I bet it's a fun game too. The trick to these, though, is making sure you have all the pieces. Now, how do you find all the pieces? If you flip this box over, and sometimes if you open the box up, you can see a contents list. Now I wanna be delicate about this because it might all fall on me, but there it is right there, the contents list. So I can use that to count against what I see inside the box. Uh, I haven't counted it out yet. I've been really slacking about listing this, but really what you wanna do above all else when selling board games is make sure they're complete. Nothing gets you negative feedback faster. Nothing gets a return faster than selling a board game that's incomplete when it was advertised as complete. 
Now, let's say it's not complete. What can I do? I can take these pieces, this very unique die, these very unique die, uh, or dices, I don't know how to say it, <laughs> and sell those individually as well. Now, it's going to sell a lot slower, but it's still a way to salvage my $3.99 initial uh, investment cost. How would I ship these out? Very delicately, there is a flat rate uh, size box that's supposed to fit board games, but I think this size might be too big. So what I'd have to do is put it in its own cardboard box and then use what I assume is gonna be USPS cubic priority mail. I think that's always gonna be the cheapest rate because again, these are very thin uh, packages. And so what I can do is make a Franken box and ship it out and probably only pay like 10 to 15 bucks shipping despite it being relatively large. Number four on our list is very similar to board games. It's puzzles. Heck, it's even models. And I don't mean models, you know, <laughs> not, not like the ones selling VOC on Instagram. I mean like, uh, you know, Soviet soldier 1947 or like a fire truck, or the kind of thing you build with your hands. Those are selling definitely less puzzles than board games definitely less models and puzzles but they're all still selling and if you are like me and you have a giant death pile of things you found at thrift stores there are probably a lot of puzzles and models in there just off the top of my head i think i've sold about three and a half thousand dollars in puzzles uh, and my pricing strategy for those was again just find what the most recent sold was and go right around there maybe go five bucks more maybe go ten bucks more ten bucks more no mucks, only bucks. Um, now, what if there's no other listings? What if it's just a brand new puzzle? Now, what I did is I priced them at 79 bucks, and they all sold as well. No angry comments, no negative feedback, no nothing. Just happy customers who are glad they can do a new puzzle. How long does a thousand piece puzzle take? I honestly have no clue, but clearly it's worth, you know, 80 bucks. The fifth and final item, and I know it's so hard for our time together to wind down to a close, uh, but the fifth item I say is almost common sense, uh, especially if you're on Instagram or, or Facebook or Twitter and you've seen the things people have been posting. And this is a bread maker, not an oven, because for most folks that's your bread maker, but the actual little home appliance that's, that puts out little canisters of bread i guess you might call them my mom had one back in the early 2000s and we used to make these little it was like um they're circles that are tall what are they called elongated cylinders something like that uh of bread i don't know why they're selling for so much maybe people don't have ovens in their apartments who knows maybe they're just lazy but whatever the fact is people are paying a massive premium for these bread makers the same ones that were selling for 10 bucks at a thrift store three months ago. The same one you probably have in your basement if you are over the age of 35. The same one that your mother has in her basement if you're under the age of 35. So there, I got gotcha. you. There's no way you don't have one. Uh, pop that on eBay, sell it for whatever the going rate is, take your money, move on, watch for the next trend because my two cents as an observer these coronavirus related waves of online e-commerce trends are not going to stop anytime soon until our country until every single state removes all lockdown restrictions which probably isn't going to happen until there's a vaccine we're going to be seeing these trends these waves and as an intelligent person it is almost your obligation to take advantage of them you know assuming you're not like breaking state laws breaking federal laws whatever it is as long as you're in the confines of the law why wouldn't you and on that note i will see you guys later don't be a shithead and uh, if you can share this video give it a thumbs up and a subscribe thanks See you later.